In this video, we are going to see how to integrate Automapper in ASP.NET Core Web API. First, we will see what the heck is Automapper, and which problem it solves. After that, we will integrate it with Web API, and then we will take a look at commonly used features of Automapper. So let's grab a cup of coffee and start learning. Automapper is an object to object mapper. Object to object mapping works by transforming an input object of one type into an output object of a different type. First thing is to create a new ASP.NET Core Web API project, open Visual Studio, then click Create a New Project. Then select ASP.NET Core Web API template and click on the Next button. Give the project name and click on the Next button. Install Automapper New Get Package. By right click on the project, and click on Manage New Get Packages. Now, we have installed the Automapper package. So, the next step is to configure for our ASP.NET Core Web API, open the startup.cs class, and add the this code into configure services method. The add Automapper method, provided by the Automapper package, which traverse the assembly, and checks for the class, which inherits from the profile class of Automapper. This method, takes a single assembly, or list of assemblies as input. We have used appdomain.currentdomain.getAssemblies which gives an array of assemblies in this application domain. So to make things simple, create two classes called student and student DTO. Create a new class, called Automapper Profile, which inherits from Profile class of Automapper. Use Create Map Source, Destination, to create a mapping between classes. When the application starts, it will initialize Automapper, and then Automapper scans all assemblies, and look for classes that inherit from the profile class, and load their mapping configurations. It's really simple. iMapper interface, is used to map two objects. Create a new controller called Student Controller. 
Resolve the iMapper dependency in the controller constructor. We have created a new object of student DTO class, and assigned values to it. So now, we have to map it with student class, we used underscore mapper dot map method. Do you wonder from where the iMapper is injected? We haven't registered it in service collection. Add auto mapper method in your configure services takes care of all of this for you. Now start the API, and browse, API slash student to see the result. That's it. You have successfully configured AutoMapper into your web API project. Now, you must be thinking about, what happens when source class has a different property name, than the destination class. Let's do it, and see the output. I have changed the student DTO city property to current city as in the code. So now, after running the application, you will see the city is not mapped with current city property. To solve this problem, we have concepts in AutoMapper called projection. So to solve this, we have to define a mapping for all the property, which are different in both classes. Open the AutoMapper profile file, and add this code. Now, run the application and see the output. In the previous feature, we have seen that how to map two different properties, but now think what happens, when both classes have inner class with it. For example, Suppose student DTO has a property which is of type address DTO class, 
and student class has nested class property called address. Most of the times, we have to map property on the basis of some conditions. And to do this, AutoMapper has a concept called conditional mappings. While writing mappings, we can specify conditions for the specific properties. So, in this example, you can see that his adult property, is calculated based on condition age greater than 15. AutoMapper provides so many other features to simplify complex mappings.